flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have some bids open here for paving projects. $68.80. And this is for paving West Charles Street from where right, right across the street from the Brooklyn and it goes back towards APR. Uh, paving Winding Way and paving Lombardi Circle. Our guesstimate was $175,000, so the $90,996.80 is well within the threshold. And what's this one? That's cool. And this is Folk Road, and Folk Road is... $104,297.95. So if we ask council, um, to, if we can look, or look over these, and if they're in order, if we could award the paving contract to the lowest bidder being all bakers. We have that motion to accept the contract you guys are doing and we're going to the lowest bidder. I'll second. Motion to make properly second. Question? All those in favor, we are consent by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay, next on the agenda we got the walking trail bid update. Bill? Um I know you. You're on. Okay. Um Lucas isn't here tonight, I think. He's in Club. Oh okay, well you're gonna supplement my what I don't add the technical parts of this, I hope. Yep. Because I think you got all the stuff sent to you so Okay. Um, since we have some new council members, this is a little mini map of the public trail. Now, I also have here a summary of some of the bid results we have for the walking trail. Uh, and this walking trail, you know, has been going on and we've had discussion for at least probably three years, probably, so for those of you who um, so, we sent out bids uh, to a number of contractors in April, and bids came back higher than we anticipated. So we met with uh, Mark Remy and the county solicitor and Scott, and we came to the determination in order to make this work, we needed to rethink how we did this out. So. In this handout, you'll see that we had an original proposal which included everything. And you see the prices are more than what we could afford. We only have, we have $480,000 of, of which about four hundred sixty-one dollars is, is actually could be used for the trail because some has to be used for engineering and for, for advertising costs. But that being said, when you look at these costs, you see they were, they were all fairly expensive. The cheapest at that time was five sixty-nine dollars all the way up to... Uh, $620,000. So we wanted to see what we could do, so we started looking at developing alternates, what, we, what could, we could take out and add back in. That way we could be fair to all contractors. 
and then we looked at changing the surface course of the trail uh, and the parking lots. Uh, and I think, Scott, you can confirm that the surface is now comparable to some of your alleys. Is that correct? In the revision. Yeah, on that, if you look at those numbers, we, I mean, it was our original amount that we had for this project was four hundred eighty-one thousand, which included the engineering fees. When we got the bids back, we started tearing them apart because there were, you know, there were a hundred thousand more than what our expectation was, and what was sending the, the cost substantially skyward was the fact that we were putting a four inch base coat down of nine and a half millimeter stone and then coming back with an inch and a half top coat on the trail. Well, if you think about it, there's only one way in and one way out. So after they do the base coat, the only way to get the top coat in was to back all the equipment the whole way up to the cement plant and then bring it back out again. And they're in talking with the contractors, there was fear that they would damage the base coat going that far off with all that heavy equipment. So we looked at a few, behind South Hills Business School, that alley was paved, it didn't have a, a finished coat on it, but it had an upgraded base coat, which if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't be able to tell. So we looked at, if we eliminate the second complete pass with labor, and just went to one pass with a upgraded base coat, what it would do to prices. So you can see it's, it's, it's over $100,000 less. And, and, and some other things we had to look at doing was we, uh, we took out some of the, uh, if we, had, we looked at, we broke out the amenities, we broke out, uh, one of the options we found was expensive. We had a walking area between Riverside Drive and the trail. That itself was almost over forty some thousand dollars, and so by eliminating that, all that also saved money. I mean, it's not something we wouldn't might, 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 might want to consider in the future, but it, it just was something we could eliminate. There's also some gates we looked at eliminating. Um, we also looked at some landscaping that we can that we can look at doing later on at some point, I guess. And the other thing we looked at was the key things that we wanted to see was not was the base trail was there and also to upgrade the parking area at Victory Park. Uh, you'll notice part of Victory Park is, is, has asphalt and part of it is gravel. This would make this all asphalt and some of it would be resurfaced and some of it would be brand new and then there would also be striped because we have parking so it would be better organized. We've already got a new HOP required uh, for the permit to get into the, to, uh, the Victory Park for highway occupancy permit from PennDOT. So we did all that. So those, all those costs were in, the, in our thought process. Then we also tried to build in what we had left based on making these changes. And you'll see in here, we said the base bid dropped when we changed the wearing course to the low bid, to 335.572. Then we had the parking lot, which was 77.238, which is a lot less than it was the other originally. We added slight lights, which are basically solar lights around the boat launch, which is one of the options we looked at solar lights around Victory Park and around the, and around the uh, boat launch. The boat launch is darker than the area around Victory Park, so we thought that would make more sense, at least for their, from that standpoint. Now, so there's solar lights, so there's not going to be a long, long uh, cost involved. And then we included uh, four benches along the walking course. That brought the total to 450 to 866 76 and that's based on the low, on the low bid, and you see how this compares with the other contractors. So it's all laid out there, um, and like I said, the, the things we don't include now is we don't have. To, you'll see in the notes here, but it doesn't include. You see what the cost savings are when we did these comparisons. So what we're trying to do is get you to approve the low bid, the first reject the, the first bid we got, approve the low bid, and that's what authorize us to go forward with with cost roads. This, the same information is going to be presented to the county commissioners this Thursday. Mm. Sorry. So. You know, the net, the net amount to the borough, <coughs> we use forty-three thousand of CDBG money as upstart money, but we're getting forty-three thousand from Mr. Rothable to name the park. So the net amount to the borough on a, almost a half a million dollar project is zero. So. The parking area you're talking about, Bill, is that down by the boat launch? You're talking about down by Snedeker's down, that wide open area? That, that area, by, that's, that, that, we, we work on the same place, right? 
Have you talking about the area down by Snedeker, about the parking? The Victory Park parking area? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Where it's about a third of its park is paved now, and the rest is just crushed right. rock. Right. So it's going to be milling all the crushed rock, putting it in a four and a half inch base, and then an overlay over the whole thing. But it, it'll be a lot nicer. It's a, it's a starting point of the trail. And, and we, we, we talked about, I mean, it, is, it isn't a high expense, but if you want this to look nice, you want this to be the starting point. So that's why, I mean, so we had to make some choices of what we could make we could make work with the money we had. And, and like I said, we, um, Scott and I talked about maybe you know, in the future looking at what, you know, what we could do, we could do internally later on down the road, including some landscaping. Well, landscaping was killing us in terms of what they were charging for landscaping, so we thought that was one thing we, we eliminated extra landscaping on the thing. So the, the, somebody asked me a question this afternoon. Why don't we take this four hundred fifty thousand dollars and improve the streets and alleys in the borough? Which is a legitimate question. Unfortunately, that's not an option with this grant money. I mean, it ha it's specific to parks and recreations. One's the DCED grant, and the other one's DCR. And, and those of you don't remember, two hundred thirty came to the county, and two hundred fifty came to the borough. That's how they came together. That's why it's taking three years to do this. Thing. Well, that would be my question too, because uh, so we have enough grant money to cover all this. Nothing's coming out of the borough's budget for this at all, because I mean we do have a lot of roads in there and the improvement. Well, I don't, and we just got a little bonus tonight. We basically got another hundred thousand, and we can use it for pavement. Based on you know, that's assuming that all the numbers are right. We we, we put in this. We have a uh, just so you know we. We, there's a small cushion in this, and that's why you'll see about eight to ten thousand dollar cushion in here because we don't. There's unknown. I think you always know there's going to be unknowns, and that's why we love this for fifty. Because uh, it's just, I mean, it's just smart, especially sometimes from contractors yeah. better knowledge about things. So we have to watch this. <coughs> and if we have, if we have, if we end up with extra money. What Scott and I, we talked and I talked about was maybe we could buy the materials in the borough and install some things on their own later on. We'll just see how that plays out in the end. But I'd rather have a little extra at the end, so that's the way this works. So. How does changing the base code and stuff work for upkeep of the trail? I mean, is this going to be four years down the road with weather that it's going to need to be redone? I don't think it's going to have a significant impact. And the loop is going to respond to that, especially since this is for walking, not driving. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Right. Now, we have had a, a thicker base. And then your your typical top course, which is a thinner stone, um, and since it is just a walking and a bike trail, we, there's a, a paving material that sort of blends the two, and it's based on the size of the stone. So we're we're just a little bit thicker than the, the fine course, but no, I, I think it'll hold up very well. Um, and then with having a little bit of a thicker stone in there too, it'll allow the sewer trucks to access the manholes, and I just think it's the best of both worlds. We can put it down in one four-inch coat, and as long as everything's compacted well and, and constructed, <coughs> sound well, I think we should be able to uh, There are two more benches, Jim, and based on the price we got and what it costs us to put the benches in here at the town, that's why we left them in. It's, that's it's really, yeah, that's for... There was one other thing we took out, like we there was all the other things we took out the trash receptacles were for high, which we thought we should look at like for instance, buying them separately and then installing them. Because right. you don't know this works in we're paying prevailing wages for paying. Well I I was gonna ask you, I'm sure this is prevailing wages. Yes, yeah, so we're yeah. paying higher than you would pay for something. The other thinking on that was the weight of the trucks to pour the base for the benches, they can do that before they lay the emissite. So that was it was kind of a trade off. But yeah, it probably is a little high, but it's not that far on what it just cost to put the two benches up there. Yeah, you're not going to get around to a valley wage. No. Good job. Four hundred eighty-one thousand. Four hundred eighty. Not four. It's only four hundred eighty. Excuse me. Not far. Yeah, I'm so off, I don't want to. Off of Quarter of a percent. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just decided. But then we had the plus we had the other thing you had with the engineering, engineering costs, which you've already been working on. I mean, <coughs> Scott knows this. We once we got approval, we we moving <coughs> as rapidly as we could once we got approval on this grant. So, um, 
And so what Bill's asking is for council's approval to move forward with this project because we'd like to award the grants. We currently in the bid package, so is the deadline of October 1st? Yes. That's to have the project that's complete. That's the project complete. I mean, the project won't, hopefully won't take that long, but it's whether, whether and everything else. We want to make sure we, this way we can, we can award this then they wouldn't get it in their cycle of work and stuff like that. So that's kind of why we're moving this along like we are. And I thought we did remarkably well to rebid a project within a two week cycle. I thought it was pretty, pretty big up there. So. Anybody have any other questions for Bill? <coughs> Down to the wizards on this. <coughs> Second, set the low bid here from Polk Road. Am I correct? Yep. Question. Roll call vote, please. Venus Shade? Yes. Mark Fever? Yes. Jim Fenley? Yes. Dave Campbell? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Larry Sear? Yes. Could we, uh, could we ask permission to reject all the bids from the first round of bidding just to Make sure everything is on the same side. Okay. I'll make that motion. The motion that we reject the previous higher bids. Right, Mark? Yes. Your second. Okay. Motion made, property second. Question? All those in favor, give it a chance to say aye. Aye. Opposed? So cares. Thank you, Bill. Any other questions for us? Thank you. Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna jump now to to, to this server for the police station. Mike Tate asked me he has some commitments and if there's any questions for him to answer, he needs to get out of there as soon as he can. So once again, we're going to bring up about the police server at the police station. Uh, I don't know, Dave, you want to say anything? Then? Uh, I asked Mike to be present here at the meeting tonight so that he can answer any questions the council has about the server we currently have, and what the situation is with it, and why we need to do it. So, Mike agreed to come tonight, and I thank you for being here. And if anybody has any questions, I mean, I, we've gone over this before. I don't know what other questions council has, but I'm glad to answer anything I can. And Mike's here tonight to answer other questions. So. <coughs> Mike, you want to give a little sermon here, just quick and. Just a basic what what we're looking at, and then we'll see if anybody wants to follow through. With. Numbers wise, I don't know where it's at. I got too many in my head, but you guys have the most up to date. Thirteen six one zero eight quite a bit. So yeah, um, we can never get it exact, but we can get pretty yeah. close. If I was ordering it tomorrow, I could give you exact penny to that. Okay, yeah. but because of you know. Being a public entity, it's harder. Whatever things are changing, um, just like any other companies, the police department needs a new server. Um, they will be out of compliance next year. But the problem is now is we're running out of room. Um, literally, I don't know how many more weeks I have. So. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do if we start running out of room. We'll just have to move it, move some of the older data. But any problem is with moving any of that data, the officers, if they go to look for something, they may miss something. 
a miss a warrant or a miss or it could be a safety issue that they do. There may be a note about somebody that I had to temporarily move off and I don't want to do that. Um, we also looked at some other options. Um, I know technology is confusing to a lot. Um, you know, this is a physical server that resides at the police station, just like we all have a physical server that resides in a cabinet. Um, we've looked at virtual servers for the police department, um, but it's definitely not cost effective because we have to go with what they call a DOJ, Department of Justice approved cloud, and it's about 40% more. Uh, a lot of small businesses, when you start looking at moving them, let's say a cloud, where you're just paying a monthly fee. You never, you never own it, but you're paying for a service. Um, it actually saves a lot of smaller businesses money, but not for the police department or government level, because you have to have that type of security, because you don't need that somebody getting a hold of that information. Um, I can't get parts anymore for the one. I think it's probably two years ago I got a bunch of parts and got it going. Uh, it's being backed up every night, so if something happens, I have it backed up. It just might take me a day or two to get the police back up uh, with temporary solutions. So. Um, Anybody on council have any questions for Mike while he's here? You said how much room might estimate? I mean, I, I guess a room, room would depend upon how much information goes in. Yes. Um, I, we have about 50 gig left, so what would that be equivalent to? Um, eight, eight to ten DVD movies? Right. Um, I, I kind of jokingly blame uh, Dave and Rich since uh, they have been part of Lewistown Police Department, uh, the data has almost, it was doubled there for several months. Now it's kind of leveled off, um, but the reason that data is, is tremendously increased, it's leveled off now, but uh, the officers are taking what I would call better, not better, um, they have been educated and trained how to use the system like it's supposed to be. So all those evidence, pictures, testimonies, all that stuff is being put in there because you may need it seven years down the road. You may need it three hours down the road. You don't know. Um, there's other things in the works. This is not happening fast enough with grant money to potentially link all the police departments together so they can do an information sharing. So when they're searching, I call it a super search, uh, they search a name, it actually pulls data from all the departments, it actually can pull from the DA's office, of the, but there's a grant that does it, it's not going to work for that grant, but there's another one coming up, uh, crossing my fingers, because I feel that that would be almost as beneficial as a life vest, or a cold fruit vest, for one of the officers of having that told. But we do need a new server keep them alive, I guess I want to say. Um, police departments are different than uh, regular businesses. The officers are actually remoting in from their cars so they can pull all that information. Uh, now, Lewistown Police is not set up to do e-ticketing. Hopefully, that will be a goal someday uh, that tremendously saves a lot of paperwork. Um, but those officers sometimes when they're doing different, it's hard, I can't go into so much detail with it. Uh, but if they're doing something, they can't be radioing it, putting it over the radio. So they have that access to do it in their car. You know, um, Until the year comes that we get the new digital radios that are secure, you know, I don't see that happen anytime soon because that's millions of dollars for this county and there's too much to swallow for our police and fire departments right now. But I know they're working on some, but I'm not really in that loop. So. Um, but when did the borough get their new server? Two years ago? Three, three years ago? Okay, three years old. Uh, 
uh, usually figure the life is maybe about five years. Um, that serve a respect to have five year, keep your drive. What does that mean? Uh, generally, the number one thing that fails on computers or servers is the hard drive. Um, I cannot send them back to hard drive because it has data on it. Just like the county courthouse, they got copy machines that have little hard drives in them for scanning and stuff like that. Well, when they go off the lease, they got to go out and spend a couple hundred bucks and buy a brand new hard drive and throw in it and keep the other one. Um, but we get to keep our drive so that way we can make sure it's destroyed, uh, which is another process. I don't I forget the term you call it. Just deband, disband. Uh, yeah, there's another term for it. Um, they do something to it, and then the next step is they get shredded. So um, that way there's no chance of that data being breached by anybody. So. Do we know how long any data for state <coughs> that the old data has to be maintained in there? How long? It, when can he dispose of any of that data? Never. Across? Never? I say never. You say never. But we don't know what the state of the federal is. Um, but it probably would depend on what the data is. Yeah, and I understand it's pictures that. But and you can't possibly be data in there that can be... Right. So criminal, you could say, you know, after seven years, it's not there. They, they can't, case law, I mean, I'm not an attorney, but yeah. case law after seven years, you can't be. Um, so you could say seven years for a criminal case, but if, if I were one of the officers and I run a name on somebody and eight years ago, I can see an incident that happened that was a criminal case that was related. That may save my life or my fellow officer's life. Do you think that'd be on somewhere else other than here? Um, is that criminal record? We wish it would be. You know that. You know. I can't believe it'd just be on this server itself. I would think on this hard drive itself. I think it would go somewhere else also as far as the criminal record. Especially if that individual went to court. Correct. Right. Now, what we call JNet. Um, uh, what JNet is, is it's an information portal that is only for code enforcement, law enforcement, magistrates, and the administrative people that make those things work, where you can pull warrants and look. Most of that information is there. But sometimes our officers will put comments and okay. some of those comments are not meant to be public, um, but those comments may say somebody's lying. You know, I mean, I know there's incidents where this. Uh, I'm just trying to think out of the box here. Look at that one. Nobody's ever said how long to keep it. Right. So as as technology keeps moving on. Um, the software that this county, four police departments use, uh, which is bought out by another tech company, I feel that they're going to be really investing into this software. So what I call archiving, meaning you can condense old data, but you can still access it, but you got to open it. You can pull it off, but that, I, I know that's coming because the data has exploded over the last few years. Right. But the cost of data <coughs> to store it five years ago, 10 years ago, you know, I mean, look at your smartphones. They used to be eight gigs, now they're 256 gigs. Um, I know it's techie, but um, technology's changing, you know. Um, I think how old is the server in there now? Are we at eight? Seven. Um, but literally at five years, two of the hard drives failed. Um, and the new server, size-wise, like how much it can store, about 10 times, eight times, at least 10 times bigger for it. Um, and it's all personal preference. I don't want to get too geeky with it, um, but the amount of hard drives and the your data is on multiple drives at the same time. Um, we kind of spec it for worst case scenario. So
so the current system in there now, um, one drive failed, we're, we're, we're down. Um, I think I can have two drives, two drives simultaneously fail and I can still operate. Now I'm gonna have some alarms, but the guys can still operate, so that way we can get parts overnighted, you know, which that does have the five year, keep your drive bundle warranty, I call it. Anybody have any other questions? Mike. Thank you. Okay, what's the council's wishes for the server? I think we need to move that to a different discussion area. Yeah, yeah I mean, this has been brought up several yeah. times. It's 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 sort of of and it needs to be discussed, but in a different, maybe executive session. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to hear the report of the ad hoc. Please add hoc. Please add hoc. Mr. Wilson. Okay, Mike, I guess there are no more questions. So we're gonna, they want to discuss it in executive session. So you can't. Any questions? You can't learn. What? You can't do that. You say we can't? Oh, okay. I like to hear the report of the committee. Okay, well, that one can. Later on, I like to hear the bill to the board of directors. Because it depends on yeah. the that. outcome right. of that I like committee's findings. It's not right. a question of them needing a server. I, I don't think that that's debatable at all. Definitely we understand the need, right? Yeah. Okay, any other people yeah. have anything you want to bring up? Randy? Yeah, I'm going to bring up something. My name is Randy Cutshaw. I live down South Grand Street. Hey, Blake. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Wellam. I spoke with him this morning concerning some property on my street. The grass was just outrageous, and his immediate action with anybody else involved, part of it's taken care of today. Uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of there's several, I don't know how many houses, seven or eight houses on Fleming Avenue from the intersection at Kish Street to the middle school. Uh, they paved all around the middle school last year and over by Grand Parkway, but the intersection from Kish Street up to the upper parking lot at the middle school is just it's, it's deplorable. I have some pictures here in case anybody wants to see them. Showing, the first couple are showing Fleming Avenue in real good condition, and then from the intersection at Kish Street up to the, up to the upper parking lot. And the residents there travel it every day, the school buses travel it every day, the students are bounced around every day, back and forth. The parents that take their kids to school, you know, it's just a real mess. Are you familiar with the upcoming project for that area? Are you, I, you want to I didn't project? see it on, like last year when the streets were announced. Wait, this, this is a, a project that's coming up. street project. For that area? I don't think what he's talking about. You up to the, the same area? I thought it is. Sounds like it. I don't think so. I'm not sure. I'm not You're sure. Not about from yeah, that, that, that's that's thirty four thousand three hundred and five dollars to pay for what you're talking about. And what we were going to do that with, we have um, about seven hundred thousand to spend from Charles Street up to that intersection. Right. And we were going to do it all at one one shot because we're going to have the paving equipment. We can just come up there right around the corner, right up to where the school paved last year. It's on the it's on the short list as far as projects that we need to do, but we there's no sense doing it in conjunction with the project we're going to be doing on the <coughs> history. I was on the uh, you know, okay. I, yeah. I, I didn't know. Yeah. No, I, that's why I wanted to I was just speaking, you know, yeah. no, no, you know the buses and the, and the cars and, I know exactly and the students from. and the parents and the teachers and the residents, you know. Well, that is on the list. <clears throat> okay. My wife is a vice principal at that school. I hear it every night at dinner. When are you going to pave the street? So I, I'm fully aware of that street. I appreciate you. Thank you for your concern. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great answer. I appreciate but you know what? I, I really appreciate concerned citizens at, with any, pro, any, any issue, so you're more than welcome in my office anytime. Okay. Thank you. you Thanks bet. for coming. You want these pictures back, Randy? No. No. Yeah, that's, that is an issue. Well, yeah, Anybody else have anything they'd like to bring before council before we go in there? Maybe now. I don't know. Maybe I, um, if I can ask. Are this the first time that I'm here at the borough council meeting? So I don't know. Is it anything that I can bring up? Or yes? Okay. So, <laughs> so mine is, I'm sorry, I guess I should say. Can you say, state your name, please? Angelica Rupert. So mine is, um, I have a few things, if that's okay. So mine is regarding permits. So if I'm doing anything at my house, I have to get a permit. I understand in some ways that I have to get a, a permit, like if I would get a stove in because it has to be by code and whatever. But if, for instance, I'm getting new windows in, I'm already having existing windows in there, and I'm getting new windows in, or just a little project, everybody's out, but you need to get a permit. My thing is, if I have to get a permit for everything, um, I feel like I'm a good, um, how do I wanna say that? I'm a good person, I do everything by what I need to do, and it's almost like a punishment. And I'm sometimes wondering if we would eliminate permits for some of this stuff, if, if more people would do something on their house, because it's like, well, I have to pay for everything. Like, why do I wanna fix up my house, you know? So it's almost like a little bit reverse. Like do something good for the people who, who want to do good, you know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so that's one of my things. And another thing is like um, I, Lewistown uh, Center, like you know, Lewistown in the middle is so nicely fixed up, and a lot of you know money and grant money is being put in. But when you drive around. It, like Lewistown, the, the alleys, and I'm not even talking about the paving. I'm talking about how uh, houses look like all jumped <coughs> out. And I live on the 400 block, and I have on the 300 block that a house that's being rented out, and that's a big issue, it's always the renting, is um, it looks like crap. And so I'm thinking, okay, so you can drive around and look at like, oh, they're doing a project, you need to get a permit. But I'm like, I'm wondering, and or I'm asking, is anything being done? to people where it really looks, um, like I'm ashamed where I'm living because it's going downhill. Where do you live, Angelica? 400 block of oh. South Grand Street. South Grand, okay, yeah. I hear And this Sorry. is not only this block, it's just seems like everywhere. So in like, for instance, um, where the, the fire company is, there is, I don't know who owns it, she had a store, now she closed it, whatever, but she has been sitting out like it's so unattractive, unattractive. She used to have yard sale. It was always like moving sale or whatever, I'm sure, yes. right, you know? And it's like now there's big containers sitting out. And I'm like, like, just make it a little bit like presentable. Clean up your area. And I feel like is anything being done for something? It's pretty hard to instill a sense of pride in people. Yeah. But there should be also a code. I feel like I uh, shouldn't be sitting out there. If you want it, hide it, or you know, I don't know. Um, I could come up with more, but I think that's about it. <laughs> Maybe the next. Oh, I do have one thing. So through the group, apparently the last borough council meeting, um, I heard that, um, and I don't know. Please correct me if, if I understood that right. Apparently, more people are coming in from different areas. They're being enticed to come here to Lewistown. And I wondered if that is true. Enticed how? Uh, cheap to live here. Um, because I'm seeing changes in the area. And I'm working also in the social field. Um, so it's not, you know. And I want to know why. Why? Because when I ask my clients, I'm like, oh, how did you end up here? like, oh, so and so. But they're never from this area. So I'm like, why is Lewistown that place? I could probably clue you into some of that. I'm aware of the fact that Mifflin County commissioners with the correctional facility contract 
to several different counties with that are local, like Snyder, Northumberland, Union, and my understanding is we're talking with the individuals at the corrections department that those in, the people who are housed in the correctional facility are here for seven, eight, nine, twelve months at, at least, mm -hmm. at max twelve months, I guess, uh, and their families are moving here. And I don't, I can't say that that explains all of the problem, but I think the changes that you and I are both seeing that are pretty evident are some of that, okay. that they're moving here to be closer to their loved ones who are okay. you know, Because it's becoming jail. really unhealthy. Oh, I agree. Having, uh, we don't have a nice balance here. We have a lot of, and I'm not against these low income, anybody can be in that, but we have a different, different kind of child, I'm gonna say. So we have more of those clientels, like, and not enough. Do you want to say, like, just oh, I do. Balance, so. I do. Okay. That's, that's the best, ex yeah, that's that's best that's explanation that's I've heard so far okay. as to why. Yeah, yeah. And it made sense. Rex, can you explain to her why we need permits? The ordinance requires permits for just about anything you're going to do. But who made, but who made that ordinance? Like, is it something that can be changed? It's made, made by Borough Council. Always be changed. The ordinance was first adopted in 1954. I think they'll could. Okay. Always and a change. These folks around this table could change them today. So desire, but uh, I just enforce the ordinances that are there on the books. I see somebody well, sure. working without a permit. I yeah. stop and knock on their door. Can you do I, any clarity? I agree with her. <coughs> When I bought my house in 1983, it had a roof and had windows. They were single pane windows, and I replaced them, but I had to get permits to, to upgrade and make my property look better. You know, so maybe something like that has to be looked into by council uh, on some of the ordinances. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep my place presentable by upgrading and, and making uh, changes and and. Uh, Make it look good, you know. I uh, like my house and my neighborhood to look good. And uh, when people do that, it it keeps property values up and makes the the whole area more presentable to entice business and people to move into the area. And I also feel like if you're selling your house, like I want maybe eventually I want to sell my house, so naturally I want to up, you know, I want to always yeah. keep it up to date. But I have to change yeah, my that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your property yeah. value would exactly. you know be better when you do these yep. upgrades. Uh, so maybe council does have to look at, at some of these changes, uh, maybe for some of the codes. Uh, <laughs> this is something I've discussed many times. And talked about thank you for, for your time. Uh, thanks, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And, and some of the thing is even the homeowners or the people who live there, um, it's people who own the property that rent it out that just don't, they're getting their income. So many of those individuals, Plus not all, reside. but many of those individuals don't care. What's that? Plus they don't reside. Either. They don't reside, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, but you can't put it all on rental. I said not yeah. all. I said not all. Yeah, there, yeah yes. not all. Too. Oh, absolutely. My experience is people will do the best they know how. With what they have. With what, what they, they have. Afford. That's the only best. Right. But those are things that definitely could be considered. Does anyone else have anything they want to bring to the board? I do have one more. Go ahead. I do have one more. Okay. So, so where I'm living um, on South Grand Street, and I'm not, listen, I'm not against four wheelers or what have you, but for years now, there's on South Juniata Street, a four-wheeler that's just riding around all the time, like in the summertime, and I feel like isn't there a woodman's like against that? Like, should this not be out in the woods? If you want to live out in the woods and want to ride it, like, but, you know, so I'm wondering regarding Do you call the home that. center? I'm sorry? Do you call the home center, the 911 center, when you see this happening? Uh, Are you aware of it? No, I don't know if I could call it for that. You need to call them and make them aware so the police can address that issue. So I do 911? They have a, they have a, non, they have a non emergency. They have, okay. You need to call that and make them aware of it so the police can 
look into it. Okay. Okay. Because I have to tell you, I had another neighbor who was trying to ride a motorcycle, and police is sometimes washing washing. Because one police then goes and says, oh, um, you need to you need to stop. And the next time the police off, another police officer says, like, well, yeah, you, you can ride your motorcycle on your own backyard and like do you know I'm saying they're not always on the same page. But I will I will call. They need I will to call, call so they have a record of it. Okay. Well is this something that is happening on their own property or you're saying on their own in? property okay. but in a, well I think they're using would it be like the gas company's property as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go back there, you can see there's like you a trail. You can see the trails from the trail there. Yeah. 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 It's private property is one thing, but if we're out well, on the road, is it thing. because is it a private private property when it's in town? You have neighbors yeah, around. Private that? property is private property. Yeah. Really? Yes. But isn't there a loud ordinance? Because we're not talking about oh, like just now. mowing the lawn. We're talking about. I, I know what you mean. I don't. There is a noise ordinance in the park. I thought so. But you're getting your meeting the center then. Your yeah. proper yeah. procedure would be to, to call up at the dispatch center okay. and, and report it. Okay. And then if it continues or something, come back to council. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. We're going to go into the regular meeting and the consent agenda. Does anyone have anything <coughs> on from the consent agenda that they want to want to remove to discuss separately? Second to accept the treasurer's report. Question. All those in favor give their consent by saying aye. Opposed? C. Approval to, of scheduled bills. There's a motion to accept that report. I'll make the motion to accept that. Is there a second? Motion made properly second. Question. All those in favor give their consent by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? You can always receive a tax collector report and commission to March and April. Second. Second. Motion made properly second. Question. All those in favor give their consent by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No okay. care. Approval of facility use forms in rec folder. Motion to accept. For a second. I'll second. Motion made properly second. Question. All those in favor give your consent by saying aye. Carried. 
additional facility use forms. A motion to accept. Motion to accept them. Your motion to accept them. Okay. I have a question about this. Why do we waive the fee for the summer lunchbox series? <coughs> that was something that was done last year. And we just carried it. We but so we don't waive them for anybody else. We didn't waive it. If you approve it, it's waived. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll take them one at a time. <coughs> Approval of facility use form to the Luminous Center. Motion. Second. Motion made properly. Second question. All those in favor, give it a consent to say aye. Opposed? Still carries. Summer lunchbox concert series. Motion to accept them. It's the concerts they do at the pavilion at the library during lunch hour on the 21st, the 19th, the dates that they have listed on their use form. Mm -hmm. That's for anybody. Anybody, anybody in the borough. Anybody. Or anybody that wants to come, I guess. Yeah, sorry. If this is on their property, why is there a facility use fee? It's not. It's on the borough's property. That gazebo is actually on the borough's property. get a motion to accept what's on this report, then they, they then you can make that motion. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna ask one more time, which will be the third time. Then <clears throat> Does anyone want to make a motion to accept this? With the, without the fee. Or with the fee. With as as it's as it's as it's as it's as yes. I'll make that motion. Okay. Anybody want to second that motion? Is there anyone wants to second the motion? Anyone want to second the motion? Okay, it dies for five or seven. Okay, now, would you like to make a motion? I would, I would like to make the motion that we accept the facility used for without being waived by the library. Is there a second to that? Is there a second to that? I'll second. Oh, it's been made properly second to grant the, the uh, permit, but they have to pay the fee, which would be what? $75. $75. Question. Did, did it 
go up. Pardon? No. Monthly event from one to three months. Oh, because it's a monthly yeah. event. Oh, I see. Okay. Roll call vote, please. In the shade. And, and we're voting on accepting it with the fee. It charged you. Yes. 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 Mark Sievers? Yes. Jim Townley? No. Dave Campbell? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Larry Sear? No. Okay. So they won't be charged to pay. Okay. Dry Valley Farmers Market from May to August on Thursdays and Saturdays. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Well, you may probably second question. All those in favor, give your consent by saying aye. Uh, all right. Uh, Lady Patriot Girls Softball on May 19th, 20, June 9th, 10th, August 4th, 5th, September 8th, 9th, Green Acre Softball Field. That's the one down by Green Gables? Yes. Okay. I'll make that motion. There's a second. I'll second it. Motion made properly second. Question. All those in favor, give it a consent saying aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed? Still carries. Sherry Shoemaker, 50th anniversary. For firefighters. I'll make that motion accepted. Motion made, second. Question. All those in favor, give their consent for saying aye. Uh, Opposed? Still carries. Friends of the Embassy Theater on June the 29th and 30th. I'll make that motion. Motion made properly, second question. All those in favor, give their consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed? Acknowledge receipt of parking authority minutes, March 2018. So moved. Motion made properly, second question. All those in favor, give their consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carries. Acknowledge the receipt of flow data for April. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made properly. Second. Question. All those in favor, give it a consent for saying aye. Uh, Opposed? Acknowledge the receipt of fame meeting minutes. So Seconded. Motion made properly. Second. Question. All those in favor, give it a consent for saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Okay. Acknowledge receipt of certificate of destruction for documents at Borough Hall. Seconded. Motion made properly. Second. Question. All those in favor, give their consent to say aye. aye. Opposed? Acknowledge receipt of business development committee meeting minutes. Seconded. Motion made. Second. Question. All those in favor, give it consent for saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Acknowledge receipt 2015 and 2017 free and clear judicial sales. Motion made properly. Second question. All those in favor, give it consent for saying aye. Opposed? Acknowledge receipt of Brooklyn's 990. Is everything in order? Yes. Compared to 990s in the past, it's the same. So, yes. So moved. Motion made. Second. Question. All those in favor, give a consent to saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Treasurer's report. Okay, so we received a request from Frank Finizio for 32 Grand Parkway. There was a broken water line that discharged water onto the street. Rex went in and he checked it out and confirmed it. Um, Frank was uh, billed at the consumption of 28,000 gallons, gallons, which cost him $208, $209.87. 
and his average consumption over the last four quarters is 7,000 gallons, which is a cost of $73.79. So I'm requesting council's approval to exonerate the difference of the 21,000 gallons at the rate of 136.08 and to bill him for the 73.70. Motion made properly second to grant the request. Questions? All those in favor give it a tip to say aye. Aye. Opposed? Approval of resolution 2018-35 for DCED financial. Um, I'm requesting council's approval for this resolution. So this that resolution, all it does is outlines the directive and the procedures that we have to abide by um, from DCD um, in regards to any invoicing procedures that we have to do for pre-2014 CDBG or any home grantees since we still have the 2014 funds that we're drawing down. All it does is establishes the procedure, and I have to, after, if council so approves it, I just have to send it to DCB, showing that we're doing our due diligence as their directive as they send out. So moved. Your second? Second. Motion made properly second. Questions? All those in favor, give their consent for saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. We received an exoneration request from the Board of Assessment Appeals for 133 Shaw Avenue for Melvin Rodkey for 2018 borough taxes. Um, it says on the um, letter that the parcel was partially destroyed due to a fire on April the 5th and they are he's requesting um, it to be exonerated. Um, the borough's amount is 247.75. Is that for the whole year or for the, the No, it says that, the um, yeah, the parcel will be rebuilt for a reduced amount with the upcoming okay, school building. So it's just for, the, so it's just for okay. yeah. We have an update on the <coughs> 131 and 133 are supposed to be coming down. And I'm still waiting on the insurance company for 127. And we're saying they're going to be rebuilt. Is that what you're saying? No, they're going to be leveled. In vacant lots. Then you want to speak to them for part of the year? Um, yeah, I think that's what it says. Okay. Council of Wages. Third. Third second. Motion made properly. Second question. Consent to saying aye. All in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? We received a letter from the Tax Claim Bureau of Mifflin County for the property at 434 West 4th Street. Um, there was an offer received in the amount of $300 for this particular property. This property was placed in the repository for unsold properties. Um, and they wanted to know what council's wishes were if they want to accept the bid, the offer, or to reject it. Where is this property? Where's well, 434? Across from West End Store, like California, a little bit. Up there. Is that right? Bacon House, it's been sheriff's old, but sold. And Red right House. And it means that people want to buy it and fix it up. So I would strongly Just, recommend it. Yeah, this gets yeah. it back on the tax rules. That's the right. benefit to the borough. Now it's just sitting there. I'm getting a yeah. tax rate. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made properly. Second. Questions? All those in favor, give me a check and say aye. Aye. our financial audit for the year ending in 2017 for all our finances and then also for the wastewater treatment plant financials and I have copies here for everyone if they would like I have bound copies so if you would like just let me know okay, thank you Code officer last month there was 32 violations found 15 of those guarding complaints uh, three of them are Properties I can then for 
on the broad and so you do have that water and power for the um, There were 64 permits issued last month with the zoning fee collected at $288.18 and $760 in sidewalk permits issued. And that brings our zoning fees collected for the year to uh, $16,910.69 and our sidewalks to 1,200. <clears throat> April's improvements in the borough was $211,289. And that brings us year to date to $1,705,842 worth of improvements. And our inspection fees that we're doing in-house, we collected $415 last month. And that brings us up to $1,100 which had started to climb even already this month. Uh, people are going to things in their inspections. And then we received one Loma letter. And also at your place, you all should have the access survey. Last month, you asked me to get quotes. And I reached out to three different surveyors. One responded back a week, two weeks later, saying he was too busy. The second one, uh, said he would get me something, but then last week his wife took ill down in Florida, so he had to take off for Florida for her. So I only ended up with one, and he gave a not to exceed price of $6,500 to try and figure this mess out down on the river. jumping in to spend it up to six thousand dollars if we could at least look at a deed for free first I mean we can get you the deed but it's not going to answer the question as to where the lines are well, you just got what nation takes in here because he's been disagreeing by spending it back and forth okay not the way to do anything or is <coughs> We've asked for it to see if it's a somebody else. Just right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. okay. Have that for you next month. Well, Mr. President, related to that, I guess I should bring this up. We run into some deals down there once in a while where people have uh, campfires going or whatever. So I get a call at home to get down and investigate the smoke for the campfires. But it's no open fires are permitted in the bar of Lewistown. Now the problem I'm running into is from time to time, I've called Rack Streets came down with me. There, we have a section of ground down in there as part of Derry Township, as part of this Granville Township. Some of Granville Township probably comes across the side of the river. Yeah. So I kind of run into a thing there now. I'm not sure. Where it is. Yes, and I'm probably telling people, making people put their little campfires out to so legally have them there. Yeah, the same problem down Victory Park Lawn, where Granville Township was over. Trying to and survey to resolve the Chief's <coughs> questions, too. Yeah. Question for Rex, code report. Reported fire chief. Okay, last month the fire department ran 22 alarms plus medical assists. 
Um, nothing of real significant damage, although I did have to get racks in a couple times to take care of some health, fire, and safety issues. Uh, also, all three fire companies was involved in Kid Connection. They had a good time. Kids had a good time. That all went rather well. Uh, myself and a couple members of the fire department went and put on a fire safety and fire prevention program for skills. Uh, we done a program for 37 assisted living people. It was a good time, a good deal. I'm sure they learned a lot out of it. Also, at the last meeting or two, there was concern about the uh, fireman's relief operations. So I just want to announce tonight that uh, come May the 24th, the auditors are coming in to do the regularly scheduled audit of the fireman's relief books. And last week, the secretary of the fireman's relief, myself, went around all three stations. We took inventory of everything that was owned by the fireman's relief association. Uh, I want to touch on this briefly, too. On well, uh, June the 1st, it'll be the 50th anniversary of the worst tragedy we ever had in the Lewistown Fire Department. Uh, back in June the 1st, 1968, we had three bar firefighters killed out of Reedsville in a silo explosion. Uh, I'll give you a little bit on that. I know the president knows some about it. Jim was heavily involved that day. He knows a lot about it. But we had three junior firemen, two from the city of Ladder and one from Fame. They was called out to a possible silo fire in Reesville. Uh, city's ladder truck was dispatched. And when they get out there, these three guys were the first three to go up the ladder. The one that just stepped off the end of the ladder on the top of the silo. The second one was on the top rung, ready to start off. And there's another one, three runs down from him. The explosion occurred. All three was moved off the silo. And all three were deceased. And in my days around here, it's probably, that's the worst day we ever had in the down Fire Department. Uh, a while ago, you gave the consent to uh, Sherry Shoemaker to use Rec Park on June the 2nd, or I'm sorry, Victory Park on June the 2nd. We're uh, going to put a memorial service together. It's supposed to be a memorial service for these three guys. Um, I've had a couple meetings with some people. A lot of the state fire commissioners want to be here to give a speech. The ex-state fire commissioner is going to be here. A couple guys that fought fire with these guys 50 years ago are going to be involved in doing some speaking. Uh, we're going to take the tower trucks down there and set up the arches, fly the flag. We have a bugle player coming in and bag piper. And, you know, we always make the commitment we'll never forget. So we want to show everybody we cannot forget these guys. And uh, this is going to be open to everybody. We're going to have another meeting Wednesday night as soon as we get everything put together. <coughs> I'm going to advertise a little bit through the Lewistown Fire Department's Facebook page. And you can help us out on there too. And Dave, you can help us out in the advertising a little bit of your Facebook page. So um, this is something we want to do. I feel we owe it to these guys. And uh, thanks for your support for the music very good. Any questions for the fire chief? Merit report. I just wanted to also make a, a comment uh, about both uh, the Kid Connection and the ceremony at uh, Rec yeah. uh, at Victory Park. I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, Kid Connection <coughs> was awesome. <clears throat> I know there's always a committee that, that works on this. As I walked around there, I, I could see the, the work that was involved there. There were a lot of happy children there and parents. and. Uh, every committee needs a leader, and Venus is the leader, and uh, I wanted to personally thank her for all the work. That was a lot of work to do, but uh, it, was, it was such a such a nice day, and everybody had such a great time, so uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, Sherry Shoemaker had come to me a while back about this, and she's very passionate about, uh, about the, the ceremony at Victory Park, so I hope that through the advertising that we can do, that we can get a nice, uh, nice group of people down there. Because uh, we certainly want to remember these three gentlemen. It was such a sad. I, I remember when that happened, and uh, it was a sad, sad situation. So uh, we need to come out and support support that program also. Is that it? Yes. Any questions for the mayor? 
Please, Jay. Uh, in April, we had 258 calls for service that our guys responded to. Um, we were 658 parking tickets, 562 of those were street sweeper. Uh, 52 citations, um, traffic citations, 18 non traffic citations, and seven warnings. Um, two of those incidents we had in April were pretty serious uh, attempted homicide. Um, I want to thank the uh, First of all, some of the citizens of the community for calling in, <coughs> giving us information on, on these incidents, which helped us to resolve them. Uh, the fire company and the chief was very responsive when we asked them for assistance. Uh, in one of the incidents, we had to look for a gun that was tossed, a loaded handgun, and uh, called on the chief. And the next day, we had about, I don't know, probably 30 to 40 of them guys that came out and helped us book and uh, you know he assisted us with, with another incident as well so appreciate all the, the assistance we got there and uh, we were able to, to resolve both of those incidents and we have uh, made arrests in both the, the attempted homicide incidents and those subjects are both incarcerated so um, the other thing I like to mention is tomorrow is National Peace Officer Memorial Day and they have a big ceremony in Washington DC <coughs> every year for that. There's actually a wall down there uh, with the names of uh, peace officers who have lost their lives over the years. I, mean, I believe um, throughout history there's been about 21,541 officers who have lost their lives. Unfortunately that continues to grow every year. Um, <coughs> May of this year uh, there were 51 fatalities in the United States, and two of those were in Pennsylvania. So, um, should we should keep that in mind this one. Uh, Will there be anything going on here tomorrow? We're not doing anything here um, locally, but uh, they do have the National Memorial tomorrow, and uh, that is televised as well. So, um, but you know, these guys go out there and put their lives on the line every day. And, uh, we need to at least remember that, at least for tomorrow. But um, that's all I have. For you. Any questions for the chief? Rec board. Jackie Folds. Jackie, how many days have you been out of Bloomsburg University for the summer now? Not even a week yet. Not even a week. <laughs> she looked at the pool and uh, saw it looks fabulous. She's ready to get that wound up next weekend. But she had uh, come before rec board and had asked for the approved wage for the pool manager was $11 an hour. And Jackie had come to the rec board and said that she would really like to make $12 an hour explained how the, the finance committee worked and that we felt the 10% increase was, substantial, was sufficient. And she said, well, I'd really like to come and address council. I said, have at it. So here she is. Um, so this is my fourth year at Rec Park. And the first two years there, I made nine fifty, And then last year, I made $10 an hour. And Brett Leister made twelve oh five last year as pool manager. And it was only his second year at Rec. So I'm kind of, you know, would like to make the same wage as him, if not more, just because it is my fourth year here. I know the pool inside and out, and it's kind of insulting to have a lower wage than a guy who's only been there for two years. Jackie might also tell you that she's also going to be in the rotation. So keep in mind that she is going to also guard along with being full manager, so keep that in mind. Um, as far as lifeguards go, there was 16 people who applied, but only tw we're, only 12 are going to remain. So we have 12 lifeguards who would like to stay, 
We have one girl who would like to work the front desk for minimum wage, and of the lifeguards, only eight of them will be full time. Well, that uh, the girl that is going to be working the front desk, she's also available if needed as a lifeguard, correct? Right? No. No. No, she decided not to get her lifeguarding certification okay. because she can work the front desk. So she's going to do that instead. Yes. Good. And yeah. the twelve lifeguards, does that include you, Jackie? No. Okay. So I would rather like. But you'd be in the rotation. I would rather try to keep myself out of the rotation just because. I can fill in where need be, and I want the kids to get their hours. There's not a lot of hours in the day. We're only open from 12 to 5. to have them there half hour early, clean, half hour later, you know, to clean more. Bathrooms are disgusting after a day, so they need to clean afterwards. So that's six hours in a day, and between all of them, you know, that's not a whole lot of wage. And what happens if it rains and the pool closes? They just go home, correct? Yep, they just go home. For the day. If you see, look at AccuWeather and you see the storm, you won't know, even open. You just call them and you just right. Most of the time, if it rains, we'll like spray it, we'll hose down the bathrooms just so the kids have something to do and to make see up if it that wage. Or something. Yeah, <coughs> see if it passes, make up that wage, you know, instead of having them stay after and like adding more to their weekly hours. Right. We had a discussion from the onset, um, Jackie and I, about the importance of expense control in the pool. And she is fully aware of exactly how the pool has been doing financially and what it's going to take to improve the performance this year. And I know that you have some ideas on some ways that we can get um, swim team, parties, we do swim lessons for two weeks. We could increase that if people, you know, want to have swim lessons. I've also thought of like family evenings because we're only open until five. So maybe one day a week we could be open from six to eight, have three lifeguards. Huh? You It'll know. make you happy. It would make me happy, and yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only person that would make happy in the borough. I feel like may, that might interest people more to come to the pool because I know Burnham's not open that late. They're open as late as we are. Six, right? I think they're only until five, five thirty. What's council's wishes? Is there, a motion to, is there a motion to pay her $12 an hour? I have a motion. I'll make the motion. <coughs> is there a second to the motion to pay her $12 an hour? Is there a second to the motion? One more time. Is there a second to the motion? My apologies to you, but there's no second to the motion. So. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mary or Rex? Or you, you still have more report, Mary? No, no, I just, um, the things on our agenda was the, the wedding and the approval of the, um, <coughs> the wedding reception. And yeah, I think that's, that under, um, I think that's in here, uh, what is she in there somewhere? Under the consent agenda. Mary, can you bring up about the Marcella Shale grant? We talked about that. Um, our wishes were that um, there is a Michelle, Michelle Share grant, and we are asking approval from Borough Council to use this to repair the roofs on the, all the pavilions at Red Park. So we need your approval to um, submit for the grant so that we can use the the grant for repairing of the roofs. That's where the county gets this money. And they divvy it up and you have to put your proposal together. And our proposal will be for the rehabbing the roofs on the three buildings down in Rec Park. And <coughs> correct me if I don't have the numbers correct, but there, 
There's about 6,000 that would be our own labor. So we would be providing the $6,000 worth of labor. We're not hiring anybody in addition. It would just be 6,000 of our workforce hours. I think it was 120 hours, Tim? Yes. Two people, yes. We'll, we'll go towards that. I think was the, the material cost around 1800 and the pain alone was twenty two. Twenty eight. Okay. Do you have a budget thirty six hundred dollars for the replacement of the ribs? Was it thirty six hundred dollars? I don't remember much. Yeah. Okay. So this would be instead of we, we put in for the grant, which would pay for the materials and we wouldn't have to spend that money. Mm -hmm. I mean, how quick does that turn around? <coughs> we quick, we'll put it in by the end of the month and we'll know by the end of June. How quick do they disperse the funds? Quick. I mean, we just go buy the materials and take, give them the receipts and they write us a check. We could, last year, we, <coughs> was it last year or two years ago, Tim? Two. Two years ago, we put in for a grant and we got approved and put the handicap accessible ramp in for the swimming pool. Like if you look at the entrance, the one that goes down towards the tennis courts. We're looking for a motion to put the grant in. looks the rooms to make the roads. It's an ambition, I guess. What you got to do is just apply for this grant. I'll make the motion that we apply for the grant and the monies be used to repair the roads on the pavilion to the airport. Sure, second. Tell Motion made, probably second. Questions? All those in favor, get her consent to say aye. Uh, Thank you. First, did you have anything else, Mary? No, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Hey, can I ask you a question? Is Mary? Yes. What one question is? Uh, oh, one of the own council that I put on. Matt Moore. Matt, Moore. Matt Moore. Is Matt Moore attending the meetings or not? No, he hasn't been here the last two weeks. No. You know, you, you asked me to put him on, and I did. And he's not showing up? He hasn't showed up. He, well, he, he didn't show up the last two <coughs> meetings, I don't think. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, first of all, thank you. Um, at Law and Ordinance, uh, past meeting we discussed some changes in the ordinance due to fines um, and it was recommended that that be advertised. We discussed this at council last time and, and council wanted law and ordinance to look at it again. Um, would council like me to go through the proposed changes or do you remember what's in it? Do you want me to just go ahead and advertise it? Is that with regard with the this has to do with like for uh, like when Rex does a, a building code violation, the ordinance currently says not more than a thousand dollars. Now we're saying not less than three hundred dollars, plus the amount of any unpaid violation tickets. Um, they're all they're all meant to bring our ordinance fine amounts more in line with the cost that it actually has, you know, staff and outside consultants to, to come in there and um, enforce those ordinances. So we're, we're increasing the fines for uh, building, plumbing, electrical and property maintenance codes, grass and weeds, uh, refuse collection, <clears throat> snow, and, yeah, snow and ice removal, and sweet stripper parking. So those, those are the ones that we are increasing um, based on recommendations from staff into the ones that were the most needed to be addressed. So what I'm looking for is approval to go ahead and advertise those for adoption next month. <coughs> What's got food with? <coughs> I'll make the motion that we go ahead and approve those for Advertising. Well, he's made probably second advertise. Questions? 
All those in favor, give their consent for saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Are we going to do an executive session? Yes, we are. Okay. I wanted in case to talk about it on there, but that's, okay. that's all I have for regular meeting. Okay. For our manager. Okay, I wanted to start out uh, and remind you all of the Charles Street Bridge closing at effective June 3rd. A little bit more update for you on this. Kind of interesting the way PennDOT spends its money. That bridge was originally slated to be sandblasted and painted, but due to the cost of containment, containing the sandblasting and the painting in relationship to this, the creek, it was it was cheaper to knock the bridge down and rebuild it than it was to sandblast and paint it. There you go, that's the rest of the story as Paul Harvey says. But June 3rd, they're gonna start, they're gonna work seven days a week and their goal is to have it done by the middle of August because school's starting like the 21st of August this year. Got some great news on the swimming pool concession stand. Sean Wilt from Wilt's Vending and his wife and two daughters have uh, signed up to run the concession stand this year. So that's fabulous. And we didn't have that concession stand up and running until about the 23rd or 24th of June last year. So it's going to be great to have them on board right from the onset. Uh, the fire department study is in, in the works. Um, we met with DCED on a conference call last month, Bill and I did. Uh, we've been assigned a guy by the name of John Semp, who was, well, correct me if I'm wrong, he was the head of the York Fire Department? Retired Fire Chief in New York. Okay. And we've been, between the three of us, we've been sending all kinds of information on the local three fire companies. So that's where we are on the update of that. Any questions on the fire study? Okay, um, year-to-date financials through the end of April. This is a way overview. But basically, general borough, uh, revenue is up 5.2%. Expenses are down a half a percent. So the total revenue over expenses is up 67% over the year before, <coughs> roughly $90,000. And we've used 70% of our budget, which at the end of April, we should have been at 66% of our budget. Refuse, revenue is up 6.9%. Expenses are up 1%. The revenue over expenses is up 32%. Wastewater collection is up 6% in revenue. Uh, expenses are up 1.7%. Revenue over, ex revenue over expenses is up 18%. And wastewater treatment the revenue is down 2%, expenses are down 5 but because of the large numbers, um, the revenue over expenses has increased from 46 to 32, from 32,000 to 46,000. So totally we're up about 150,000 revenue over expenses over fiscal 2017. Any questions on that? Okay, and lastly, I have a, I mentioned briefly when uh, we were talking about the Kiss Street and the Manor Drive project. One of the things that we weren't able to do because of the grant that we received from DCED was to do a study and put in a traffic signal at the intersection of Green Avenue and Kiss Street. So we uh, looked at had Lucas put together a proposal on, in conjunction with this, doing a study, a traffic study, on that intersection with the idea, the Arley Grant, um, what's the deadline of that, Lucas, the end of May or the end of June? June 30th. June 30th. We wanted to do the study, which is $8,000. We have enough money that we could carve out of the 700,000 we have for that project. And if it proves that we need a light to put in for the Arla Grant, to have the Arla Grant pay for the light, which is around $300,000. So what I'm asking is, well, Lucas, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, 
No, just what it would allow us to do is uh, if we do get to go ahead tonight, we'd be able to put the traffic counters out and get the school buses input into the intersection. Um, we have, you know, obviously until about May 31st, uh, if we did get to go ahead, we'd get them out probably next uh, Wednesday, Thursday, get that data back and download it, and then we would know one way or another whether it does warn a traffic signal. Um, you know, everybody's got a pretty good inkling that it will. That will allow us to work with PennDOT through the month of June uh, for your June council meeting and, and proceed with the Arley grant uh, for the red light enhancement and uh, add that to our total project for history for the rest of the year. Probably the, uh, the major downside on that. The grant is what, 50-50? No, the Arley grant, um, it's actually 100%. The Arley Grant is 100%. They, they do like it if you put up money towards that. And that's where I, we sort of felt, um, and, and in some preliminary conversations with PennDOT, the fact that we already have the 700000 for Kish Street with buy-in from Geisinger and the borough, that we're already on the way, we already have a project in the works, and if this study comes back that the traffic signal is warranted, um, then we can just roll that 300000 or whatever they award us right into the whole improve that entire um, area down through Kish Street. So. And, if, and if it comes back and a traffic signal is not warranted, <coughs> then we've at least done our due diligence and we can go back to everyone who, including ourselves, have been complaining about the traffic congestion at this point. We'll, we'll have a sort of a basis moving forward that any new development or changes in the area that take place, we can have a, a good starting point from here. What's the last it's a not to exceed. Not to exceed. <coughs> eight, yeah, not to exceed eight thousand. Uh, we, you know, we've had uh, people question. I mean, we're going to spend seven hundred thousand, and a lot of people were in favor of putting in a light. Which, I mean, the, the total project was one point one million, and we had to give somewhere, and it was the light. So we felt that. We need we needed to at least prove to ourselves that one either a light isn't needed or if it's needed, go down a different avenue, fundraising wise, to make it happen. And in the end, even if it doesn't fully warn a traffic signal, we can look look at left turn lanes and some other options to help with traffic congestion. Uh, see what comes out of that. So it, it's sort of a starting point. We would be on the hook for the parts of that traffic study. Well, we would be on the hook, but it would be coming out of money that we already have for that the seven hundred thousand that we have for that. Yeah, we're a shortfall. We don't have enough to cover, do we? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we. I mean, again, we have a we have a some built-in work because of the you know cost runs, um, or over runs, I guess. We're, but we started that that project was originally 1.1, and because we came in lower, or the money we got from DCEB was lower than what we expected. So we made some necessary cuts to get it down to the $700,000 project. Yeah, okay. 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 To do a traffic study. Do a traffic study. Second. I'll second it. Motion made properly second. Questions? Roll call, please. Dean Shady? Yes. Mark Sievers? Yes. Jim Donnelly? Yes. Dave Campbell? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Larry Steele? No. That's all I have. Yeah. Uh, before we go into unfinishing new business, we have an alcohol policy here that we then take separately if we need to it for uh, court TV or it's on uh, October 13th. We should have a, a uh, because it's going to be alcohol served, we should have a separate. Okay. For Motion no, made properly second. Question? All those in favor, give your consent and say an aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? May.
Okay, under unfinished and new business. Approval to release 2015. Approval to release 2015 CDBG funds for salary reimbursement in the amount of four thousand two hundred ninety-eight dollars seventy-seven cents. In 2016 CDBG funds for materials and supplies in the amount of eighty-five dollars and seventy-eight cents. Second. Motion made. Properly second. Question. All those in favor, give a consent. Say aye. Aye. Opposed. Was carried. Approved Stephen Russell removal from the police advisory board due to him serving on the planning commission. When I uh, when I spoke with Stephen, <coughs> he said he wanted to stay on the police advisory board. Oh, he wants to stay on there. Yeah. Oh, he wants you to stay on unless the police. He, and I'm, I'm yeah, unless he that. contacted somebody. No, he didn't. Yeah, so he, he wants, wants it the opposite way then. Right. He wants to get off the planning commission. Right. Okay. We can do that. Right? Okay, so it'll be for the removal from the Planning Commission. Right. His name is Stefan instead of Stephen. It's Stephan. Yeah, it's S-T-E-F-A-N. -E no. Stefan. No. No, it's his name. What's it? S T E F A N. Uh, yeah, okay. Stefan. What's Council's wishes? I'll make a motion. Yes, I'll second. Well, you may probably second to remove them from the Planning Commission. Questions? <coughs> All those in favor, give your consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed? Approval to appoint Tobin Fisher to the police. Oh, we can't do that. Yeah. No. Well, do we have a vacancy on that? Yeah, Deb? there was another vacancy. There's another vacancy. That's oh, why I another? thought he was no, going off. So that's why I thought Stefan or Stephen or whatever, yeah. Mr. Russell, no, was that. We had, we had a vacancy on so There's another vacancy okay. besides. Yeah, the Fisher will take care of the other vacancy oh, that we okay. have. Approval to appoint Tobin Fisher to the Police Advisory Board by Resolution 2018-36. I'll make that motion. Motion made, properly second. Question. Roll call, please. Dean Shade. Yes. Mark Sievers. Yes. Jim Bowman. Yes. Dave Campbell. Yes. Bill Wilson. Yes. Larry Sear. Yes. Okay, Bill, you're up, finance chairman. First thing we're going to try and vote through is approval of the new time clock that we need down at the down at the garage. Is that where it's at? <coughs> we approved it through finance. Just need to approve it uh, through council. You say finance is okay with that? What's that? Let's find out on the last user to find something about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we can pick off the user. Yep, not a problem. Motion made, probably second. Perk the new time clock. Question? All those in favor, give your consent to saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> okay. And we're looking for approval for the WEX program. It's a uh, credit card that could save us a possible $2,500 for the year. <coughs> this is a, it's a CoStars program. Okay. And it basically opens up, right now we buy our gas from the Mini Mart and Snedeker's, but we don't get any discount on the rack price of fuel, we just get it tax free. So this program, as discussed in finance, gives us the opportunity to have a savings off our gas price that we purchased. <coughs> to give you an idea, last year we bought $137,156 worth of fuel. So just at the 1.85% savings, which doesn't sound like a lot, it was $2,535 savings. The other nice thing about the card, 
each card is it's done for the user of the card. In other words, what I mean by that is, say you work in the um, streets department, and you work 6.30 to 3, I think is the time that they work down there. If you go to get gas at 6 a.m. or 3.30, it won't work. So it has to be within the time frames of when the employee's working, one. Two, when they go to get gas, they have to put in a, a personal code that you need the individual. And three, you have to put in the odometer, which we currently do. So there's a couple of extra checkpoints involved. But um, just the fact that we can save some additional funds, I think is uh, a good thing. In this, in the county right now, Granville currently uses the WEX program. And I spoke with the people that at CoStars, and they speak extremely highly of it. So it'll be you can fun. still get gas in both places. You can get gas anywhere, pretty much anywhere in Mifflin County. Okay. And Sheeps is included in those as well. Can I say something? I was actually going to work for Overlook Tire Company, and I worked for Overlook Tire and Snow Removal. Tim, <laughs> the advantages of the car, we can change it by just picking up the phone. And, and I trust you, I want your snow plows to, to plow. But that's what percent of the 365 days? Very small percent. So if the roads don't get cleared this winter, you can get fuel. Scott didn't. <laughs> I didn't change the car. <laughs> hey, I have one question also. It's not a fact fire department, any because um, we have cars and we get built for tomorrow. We will, you will be on this program. We'll be on the program. Yep. So each individual driver at that time is going to need his own. Mm -hmm. That number rather than use one for the rig. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, we can do it that way too, but we can put it in there as the rig. But I would recommend that we do it in by individual. That'd be the safest way. Yeah. You want it by individual? Yeah. Okay. They, they'll be involved in that. What's your guys' with the wager? I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made properly second and approved the WEX program. Question? All those in favor, give it a consent for saying aye. Aye. <laughs> Okay, we're looking. Room. Got another one here. Yeah. Looking for <coughs> approval for the purchase of cyber security insurance from AC Kerstetter <coughs> with the additional cost of $992 for our insurance. Do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, I mean. I highly recommend the cyber insurance, being the fact that um, you know, the world is responsible for all the uh, online data, no matter where it's stored, <coughs> and the borrower could be held liable for, for the data um, if it's compromised, because we have credit card numbers, we've got social security numbers, we've got driver's license numbers, so if any of that gets compromised, it actually puts the burden on the insurance company, not on the borrower. So I highly recommend we pick this coverage up. Motion. Second. Motion made promptly. Second question. All those in favor, for your consent, say aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Any questions for finance? Dave, you're up on order. Okay. So we have an issue where our guys go. Um, to unclog a trap, which is part of your sewer line. It's out by the street in front of each of your houses or apartments, whatever. And when they go to do that, these vent covers are cemented shut. So we, um, law and orders, we're seeking approval from council to add a $50 fee when our guys have to go out and put time and money into freeing up these van covers, which essentially there, would... In other words, when, when people redo their sidewalks, okay. right, Bill? Yeah. You get a bit, you know what the little bit, it's not supposed to be included with the adherence of the concrete. It's supposed to be 
forming it and then you drop it in place so you can pull it off. We had one, well, we had a couple, but the, the um, collection crew goes out and they need to get the back there in the pipe. And the only way to do that is to get the cap off. So you have to cut the concrete to get the, the cap out so we can use the back to, to clear the pipes. How often does this happen? How often does it happen, JR? Quite frequently lately. The new project on the sidewalk is still going. So, uh, it's not only really used for the library, it's to do our visual inspection to, to determine whose responsibility it is to the same time. Yeah, and it's just it's time and money. It's our access and it takes the homeowner's access at the same time. Yeah. And everything so that anyway, we can't do our job. Property second, 30, 50 bucks. Before you go on that, I have one other question. What happens when you remove that there's any damage done to the sidewalk? Who's responsible? The, the way it is now, we make every effort possible to contact the homeowner. I understand. If, if that if happens, it, we damage the sidewalk, we're we liable to remove it. Well, that's a good point, Joe. Yeah. I mean, we would probably be liable, but the. Yeah. What do we do? We only go to a house that we're called to, right, JR? I mean, we don't just, the one on Valley Street, the sewage was coming up and running down the sidewalk. So right. that's, that, you don't have a choice. I, I'm not sure I'm not worried. I think I'm worried by somebody else other than the homeowner, okay, whatever you have sewage running down the street. Then, it, then it's, you don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. And, and I think if the people have their vent in, they're in violation of our own, it's not an ordinance, but it's a sidewalk. What do they call it? Uh, I just want to make sure the liability is not enough. I don't want to go around and put sidewalks. No, neither do I. Now that we're getting some replaced. Yeah. Okay. You don't see a liability there, Mark? No, I mean, because like I said, they're already in violation of a okay. uh, regulation okay. by having it cemented in. Any other questions? All those in favor, give it a check to say aye. 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 Uh, well, the ordinance is also seeking approval to advertise a ruling agreement for the 2016 CDBG and <coughs> subsequent years ordinance. Mark, you can probably explain the, the fee side of this better than. Yeah. So for a while, you're you're aware of this whole CDBG thing. For municipalities the size of Lewistown, the state has said you have to have <clears throat> the um, county administer your CDBG funds. Many years ago, Aaron used to do it for the borough. That was part of her job. Um, now we don't have to have we don't have to pay someone to do that. We pay the county to do it. The way we do that is we pay. 15% fee to the county, which we negotiated down from 18%. Um, when this first happened back in fiscal year 2015, or 15, um, it was council's wish to do it for one year rather than to have it just be a, a contract that continues. Um, so now we're, we're at the point where we've only really ever approved one year. County has continued to administer the grant for fiscal year 2016 and 2017, but 
for a number of reasons, we should have uh, an agreement in place with the county. This was advertised for adoption a couple months ago. It failed. Law and ordinance has recommended once again that um, it be advertised <coughs> once again for consideration by borough council. The advantage is one, every year we have to advertise this, and every year Mark has to spend his time putting another agreement together, which costs the borough money. Versus and re advertise. Yeah, and every time. So what we're what we're doing with this is saying it can be canceled at any time by any party, but it's gonna be a, a rolling five year agreement at the fifteen percent. Unless we gain approximately two thousand residents, we're gonna to continue to have to use the county to solicit the C D B G money. And uh, Unless you guys want to continue to spend money year after year doing the same thing, the recommendation was of law and ordinance to just bite the bullet, put the agreement in place with the codicil that anybody, either party, can't, the county or the borough, could cancel the contract at any time. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. They, we have to use them. There's no one else we can use. Yeah, we're, it cost the borough approx, approximately $18,000, but it cost us about $58,000 before because we were paying somebody full time to do this. So it's really, it's a tremendous deal. I don't like to tell too many people that might have an in with the county that we're getting a great deal, but we are getting a great deal. <laughs> that, I, I did check with the county. Your advertising fees would be reimbursable out of your CDBG <coughs> if you choose to do it that way. It's just, I guess it depends on what pot you want to pay it out of. What's guys on the way? What he meant by that was, we're still going to, it'll just be less money that we have in CDBG. So if the ad costs $500. It's going to be paid out CDBG, but that's five hundred dollars in addition to the fifteen percent. It's not out of the fifteen percent. Well, we can pay it once a couple, a couple, yeah, cover a couple. Of yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about this? I mean, I know it failed last time. I know there was some discussion. Well, I think the it was brought up about renegotiating, but I think that we've all discussed that that's we're already hitting a lower. Right. What's well, guys on the I'll make the motion that we advertise a rolling agreement for CDBG monies for subsequent years. Second. Right. Second. Yeah, Mark. Mark seconded. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't marry Mark. So I was made properly second. Question. Can I just ask a question? Yep. Can the county rebuttal this? Pardon? Can the county rebuttal this? Because they weren't too happy about dropping from. From, 15, uh, from 18 to 15, can they? This is the agreement we have. We're, we're agreeing to whatever they charge in the next five years to pay. No, 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 we're, we're agreeing to 15% 15 15 per year for the next five years. Yeah, so can they, can they come back? At any time. Scott and I have had the chance yeah. to talk to county staff about this. I mean, I think there's a very good chance that this will be accepted by the county. I mean, ultimately, you have three county commissioners who vote on this, but I, I, I don't have any reason to think this is going to be a problem. All those in favor, give it a good temper, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Any other questions for law and order? I, it's, it's not on the agenda, but I wanted to ask while we were here because it was a discussion in the law and ordinance committee um, about boarding and rooming houses in the borough. How many do we have in the borough? Seven, I believe. Can you tell me seven? I think there's seven. Do you have that list with you, Dave? Have you sent me? Six, seven. 
So we have seven boarding houses. There's seven here, and he says there's one more that did not have any incidents, so eight. Okay, so we have a substantial crime problem that's surrounding these boarding houses. I mean, it's in black and white. That's, and I, I don't know what the answer is there, but it, uh, we have to look at how we regulate them. Have you talked about this long ago? So we did talk. We did. I mean, we're talking. It was, it was tabled for. Yeah, because we ran out of room, our time. So. Oh, okay. I mean, we're talking overdoses, we're talking burglaries, deaths, uh, narcotics <coughs> charges, fraud, um, assault. I mean, the one incident, the one major incident we had in April. Um, was outside of? That gentleman was, was staying in? In that in one of the boarding, boarding house. house. Okay. And the issue is these guys, the, the owner of this property worked <coughs> against law enforcement to try to solve a very substantial crime in our community, and that doesn't sit well with, with me, but I, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, it's easy to just to say ban boarding houses. I mean, oh, we can't do this, that. this is insane. But, I mean, you need to sit down with the solicitor and talk about the groups and so on. I, I agree. And there's over 120 incidents, and if you look at the dates of the incidents that, that you gave me, Dave, uh, you'll see that the majority of them have occurred in the last two years. The ones that are more substantial, um, and I think it's a direct correlation of the individuals that are moving into our community for other reasons, going back to what we were talking about in Delica. Uh, so, there again, I, I think that's something you need to sit down with the solicitor law and order. To, yeah, we need to, to look at the ordinance right. and how. See what you can do with the ordinance. Can I send that back to law and order? Yeah. We'll work on that, Any other questions for law and ordinance? Okay, Bill, Street Committee. Okay. <clears throat> Looking for approval to remove the yellow curb in front of. Water authority on Chester Street. But the sign will still be in place for no parking between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. But after that, they'll be able to park because there will, will not be any yellow curb. What's the council's wish? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion made, properly second. Remove the outline. Keep the parking sign as is. No parking 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Question. What, what's this yellow line put there for to be used? <coughs> Nobody seems to know. When they, when, they first, when they first put that in, I think that's when the yellow line was put in there. There are issues there when they come up to drive through the standard homes for the water, you can't see on the street. But the sign would still prevent people from that's parking. That's correct. Right. Express the sign. There's a liability as far as. But it frees up spaces for residents that live there to have people park in these areas and such. All those in favor, consent for saying aye. 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 Opposed? No care. Okay. <clears throat> Looking for approval in front of the courthouse. Take the uh, handicap space from Wayne Street <coughs> and move it to Third Street by the handicap ramp where it should have been. And that's that's all they're going to want at this time is just one. There's currently a handicap spot in the very first spot when you come from the red light on Wayne Street. Uh, they're going to take that spot and move it around to 3rd Street where you enter the courthouse where the handicap ramp is uh, so that it's right there okay. in front. So that's going to take out one of the... Uh, It'll just take the... Oh, it is moving it from, third, from Wayne Street to 3rd Street. We okay. still have the same number. There's one across the street on 3rd Street from the annex. Right. But isn't that where the parking is for the 30 minute? I mean, you can pull in and Yeah, the, there's, there's, behind yeah. that spot would be where okay. there's still places for parking for county business. Okay. 
Yeah, so many handicapped spaces, or mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, <coughs> I mean, just move them one to another, or just it's up to council. Really? Okay. Were you getting adding one? Yeah. The original request was for two, and there's a the committee's feeling was there's a new flower shop that's going in like five doors down on the right side of the street. And the, there's a lot of county employees that park there now where the retail business is going. So to, their thinking was not to give another handicap spot this time since they had one across the street. And I spoke to Lonnie and Griffin about the county and he said that the one would be fine and they'll, they'll watch the one across the street and see how that's used. And if it's not being used enough, then they'll move that over as their second space. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Second. I can make probably second to relocate the handicap participation to coordination. Questions? All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Any questions for the streets, Chairman? Okay, Bill, your ad hoc committee report. Myself and my committee is going to be meeting with Mifflin County Regional Police Board on prices, on police protection. They're not going to be setting in any kind of rules or anything. They want to sit down with us and tell us how they charge now. Because they said, John McCall said they changed it from the last time. So all we're going to do is sit down and talk figures. Um, <coughs> any question? I don't think they want to talk to us. Don't be chief over there. Okay, anybody else have any public comments? Not we're going to take about a five-minute recess. Well, just real quick, when we go into executive session, could we have um, Mr. Ernest and the gentleman that he brought with him tonight? And I, I was going to say that. What, what are we going to do? Executive session. Hey, personnel. Hey, to to Mr. President, what are we going to executive session? Personnel. Yeah, it's it's an instinctive point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We'll take about a five minute recess here.